This is Marcus Eaton. Thanks for listening to Herms Promi Corner. Hallo und herzlich willkommen zu einer neuen Ausgabe von Herms Promi Corner. Ich freue mich sehr, einen großartigen Musiker, man sagt einer der besten Gitarristen der Welt und in den USA, dass er heute in meiner Sendung ist. Das freut mich umso mehr. A very warm welcome to Marcus Eaton. Hi, Marcus. Hey, Herms. Thanks for having me on the show. I said to the audience that you are one of the most Uh, leading guitarist in in uh, USA and in the world. I, <laughs> <laughs> I, I like your music, I, uh, your guitar playing. But let's talk about the beginning of, of Marcus Eaton. You are part of a musical family, I know. It's right? Yes, I grew up in, in the state of Idaho, which is in the northwest of the United States in the mountains. My dad, whose name is Steve Eaton, is a songwriter and a really amazing singer-songwriter. I grew up around him as my primary influence, but also he had one of the first recording studios in the state of Idaho. And my grandparents, his parents were also opera singers. So I was around music and, you know, even my mom's side of the family is also very musical. So I'm really lucky. I'm, I'm surrounded by music. When did you start with uh, writing, composing by your own? I started playing guitar when I was nine. I got really interested. I was playing piano first. My grandma, my mom, my dad's mom taught me piano lessons when I was about five. And then I, I became really interested in the guitar when I was nine. A couple of years later, I was 14. I started writing my own songs, which wasn't foreign to me because that's what my dad does. He writes songs. And so it felt very natural to to write original music. It was uh, It's just something that I feel like was just there for me to... It was all ready for me to do. <laughs> that makes sense. Can you remember your first song that you wrote? Or yeah, I wrote a song. Yes, I wrote this song that was like a, it was almost like a funk song. It was called Carousel. I was really influenced at the time by Jimi Hendrix. And then I was listening to this band called the Spin Doctors. It was mm -hmm. a really funky band. And then... I just kind of combined the two things and I thought, oh man, this is cool. And so, yeah, the song was called Carousel and it's actually recorded. There's still a recording of it, but that was the, like the first thing that I wrote. So that's what I remember. Marcus, you divided your time in the USA and in Italy. What's the special of Italy that you live there some months? Well, or It's really interesting because I started playing here about 11 years ago, like in 2000 and 2012, actually. So it's been, it's been a while, but I started touring over here and Europe just has a different feel and it has something really special about it. But my family's from here, my mom's side of the family, and they're originally from Tuscany and I have cousins here. And so I met them for the first time when I played here and I just kind of fell in love with the Italian vibe. It's just an amazing place full of art and just the culture is amazing. The food culture is amazing. Espre I'm a total espresso nut. So that's one thing that kind of keeps me mot motivated all the time is, is trying to find like the best espresso I can. But um, I just kind of fell in love with it over here. And I, I've had more opportunity in Europe than I have in the US. And so It inspired me to try to base myself here and and to do more things. And I've been playing in Germany a lot. So it's really opened a lot of doors for me to be here. And I just love it. Is um, Italian ice cream a motivation? Oh, gelato. Yeah, every day. <laughs> every day. If I could, I would probably do it every day. But hey, you know, during the summer... I've been known to eat a few gelatos every day. So, you know, it's it's danger zone over here. You got to be careful. <laughs> Back to the music, uh, Marcus. Yeah. Are there any rituals, 20 minutes, for example, before you go on stage? Yeah, I I like to warm up. Um, I like to, I really like to do vocal warm ups because all of these songs are really actually challenging to sing live. They're all really at the top of my range, my vocal range. So I really like to warm up into those. And I do a lot of guitar warm warm ups as well, because acoustic guitar, which is what I play primarily, especially solo, I can only bring one guitar with me when I'm touring. So this acoustic that I play, you know, it's always challenging because acoustics are 
they've got a lot of string tension. So I warm up, I try to get really loose. And then I try to remind myself if there's any parts of new songs or even old songs that I've, I've kind of temporarily forgotten. I mean, you're a musician, I'm sure you can relate to this. You have like one chord that's a transition. You go, oh yeah, that's the one that, that kind of messes me up every time. And so I go through those in my mind and try to get <laughs> get all the everything ironed out. We say that's kind of my my ritual beforehand. And then and then I you know I try to just close my eyes for a minute, think about how I want the the, the show to feel. Then I go out there and do my thing. How important uh, is for you the contact to the audience when you're on stage? It's really important for me. Actually, it's become more so that way. I think when I was younger, you know, you don't have an, enough experience to really understand how you're going to interact with the audience when you're younger. But when I was younger, we played a lot of shows that were sort of, I guess you could call bar shows, where you're playing for people who are, you're kind of the background music for their drinking. And they like to dance and they like to do some things. And so you you kind of learn to get used to that. But it's not a real listening audience. Most of the time, there's it's just kind of a chaos thing that's going on. I really love to play now for an audience that really listens. And it, it actually allows me to open up more and to be myself and actually entertain more, even, you know, with with comedy and just talking back and forth with the audience. I just really like that. It's sort of like stand up comedy, you know, and you just sort of allow the the flow of the night. And I change my set lists all the time too, depending on the audience. Because sometimes people will ask for a song or I'll just ask people what they want to hear. And I just kind of go with the moment. And I, it feels really good to interact with the audience that way. Then let's talk about your upcoming album in 2024. It's yeah. called What is Real is the name. I heard yeah. most of the songs already yeah. before our uh, interview, but I want you perhaps to describe all the songs in one as a house for the audience who didn't know Marcus Eaton music feels like. Yeah, wow, that's a that's a deep question. Okay, I'll, I'll do my best. Of course, with my music, each song is unique and it's a very eclectic album. There's, I think there's three songs roughly that are basically acoustic and then there's three songs that are really big and there's more and there's more songs than that but i kind of thought about the album in two parts one is so, sort of acoustic and the other part is is more of a band thing the feel of the album is really quite deep because it's very introspective i worked on it during 2020 during covid and i had the opportunity to incorporate musicians that were actually home taking a break because of covid because everyone was forced to to be at home so i incorporated especially this amazing uh, viola player friend of mine named megan cassidy she did these string arrangements for me that are just crazy so each song has a very very deep vibe the feel of it it should really make you feel like you're going on a journey it's like the type of music that is very cinematic actually the album is very cinematic and it kind of sounds like it could be the theme for a film in a way um it's great travel music and it's a really great way to i think tap into something deeper within yourself or just get lost and i think that we need that now but It's not getting lost in, in a way that I don't know if I can explain this, but there's so much music that's just kind of throwaway music that's writing about something really not that deep, you know, like, hey, let's go out on Friday night and party and, and get drunk. And to me, like, yes, that's there's a place for music like that. But with my music, it's not it's not like that. It's actually very introspective. And I think that if people really tap into the themes of the songs, they'll discover something about themselves, I hope. And if they don't get that deep into them, they can just enjoy the music and really sit back and, and just relax. It will take you on a ride. There's a song called Electrified, and, the, and the, the theme is nothing better for your soul than the sound Electrified, which is kind of like my ode to music. So it's really just a way to, to get lost in the music. <laughs> Then let's talk about three songs of it. Yes. Just talk about the first single, Obvious. Why did you start with this song as a single out of the new album is there a special meaning or who decided that this song will be the first coming out of what is real <laughs> that's a good question <laughs> a really good question uh you know this is like one of those independent artist things that that you'll totally understand um there's no label involved it's just me mm -hmm. and so when i put it out what happened was i wrote the song 
previous, I think in 2019, I think I started that song and finished it up. And it was sitting there and I had started recording it and I wanted to get my friend Megan to play strings and to play some violas and violins and do a string arrangement. And she was like, oh, I'm busy. I can't do it. I don't have a studio, blah, blah, blah. So fast forward 2020, she says, Marcus, oh my God, I have to be home. Uh, She's in the UK and I really have to set up a home studio because people are asking me for string parts. So can you kind of give me some suggestions on what I should get? And we went back and forth. Mm -hmm. And she got her little studio set up and she said, please send me something that I can play on. And I said, I've got the song because it's been sitting there for her. So Mm -hmm. I sent it off to her. We finished it up. And of course, I was working on the other songs. But that was the first one we finished. And I was just so excited about the idea because actually the idea really represented 2020 to me because... Within the COVID experience, we had the opportunity to tap into something totally new, which is that we had all this time and everybody had the opportunity to sort of be at home in a different way and sort of recreate themselves. And I thought for a minute, I was like, man, this could be like the turning point for the world here. <laughs> but but the, the song is actually ironic because my original idea for the song is that all of these things are happening around you that aren't necessarily good but they're all leading you towards something good. And that was the, the the phrase, it's obvious things are working out. So for me, the reason that it came out and when it did was because I thought it was, it was like the perfect theme for the time period that we were all experiencing. So if that makes sense, that's the, that's the explanation. <laughs> okay. The first song of the new album that I heard was by Stander and Yes. It puts me right back to the sea, the my car. Uh, it's a great song. I love it. There are a video with some illustrations or drawings uh, of the faces. It's a very special video. I, I like this black and white, this kind of, of visualization. In Germany, we call bystander as a Zuschauer, Publikum. You look yeah. out, out from, from the outside of uh, the, this thing. The story behind, are you a bystander in by your friends, uh, by public, uh, by all that uh, kind of environment around you? Well, this is a, it's kind of an interesting idea because it was based on the situation in the United States. Well, first off, I'll, I'll say one thing. The video is really cool. That's my friend, Cree Polto is her name. And she illustrated that video by hand. So each one of those drawings was done by hand. No one does that anymore. She's an incredible artist that lives up in northern Italy, actually where my guitar is made. And she is just awesome. So if you, you know, if your listeners, if you haven't seen the video, definitely check it out. It's drawn by hand and it's very unique. But the, the idea for the song <clears throat> Bystander was originally inspired by this George Floyd thing that happened in the United States. Um, he was a, a person that was basically killed by these police. And I started thinking about how people a lot of times in our world are standing by while these terrible things are happening to others and they have the opportunity to do something and they don't. And then other times like George Floyd, someone actually filmed it and it completely changed the world. That was all that they could do. I mean, they couldn't intervene with, with the cops. So it was a really interesting idea because I wanted to explore like what what that means and we don't need another bystander and i'm sort of applying it towards a bigger theme which is that you know to change the world it's like we all have to jump in and do something we have to get our hands dirty and we can't stand back and wait for other people to to take the opportunity we have to take it ourselves so that's that's the idea i don't know if that answers your question i hope so uh, yeah <laughs> of course the next video is made by billy woodward amazing this desert landscape television but this very very fast moving pictures it takes me back to my time when i was a teenager when i first saw the video sledgehammer of peter gabriel yes new new decade begins with this oh, kind yeah. of videos and i think this video is something or mm, yeah something like this a new kind of making videos no that's think such a, also yeah well that's such a great reference because that's that was my reference for the video when we first started it i told billy that and we talked about this that i i used peter gabriel's videos for a reference so that's so cool that you picked up on that because 
those videos were groundbreaking, completely inspiring. And, you know, back then they probably had a lot of money to, to put into those videos. I mean, that's a lot of work that was all mm -hmm. illustrate or uh, claymation and, and, you know, hand animated stuff. So now with this AI thing, Billy is just an incredible artist and he, he's a musician as well. So he really understands how to edit things really, really on the beat and to the music, which, which really helps a lot so we talked about some visions i had when i was writing the songs he just came up with the coolest i can't even believe how cool the visuals are but what's really neat about ai the way that he created it was that each frame has about 20 different variations on the frame so you're seeing this picture and then you're seeing it kind of morph about 20 different ways before it changes and it is so intriguing in fact when i first watched it i was just like oh my god it's kind of like you can't take everything in at once you have to watch it a few times <laughs> it's so like really tantalizes your senses and it really sucks you in so i'm really glad you picked up on the peter gabriel thing though that's amazing yeah yeah or something like you said murphing uh godly and cream um this great song um where the faces um murphed over and over oh, and over yeah. you know? yes uh, yeah, also I also fun of this that michael jackson made it uh in another video some special uh like this murphing the faces again and so in yeah. the movies there was um much experience in this time and now when you look at bam it's it's another way to use yeah. it by computer and also but yeah. i think this Better Way, the song is called Better Way, uh, we're talking yes. about. It's amazing. It's very amazing and saw it three times, but you can't get all these pictures in your head. It's just impossible. Yeah, yeah, it's really it's really intriguing. And, and, and like you said before, it is a new way of doing things. It's a way to embrace the technology because a lot of people are really afraid. You know, a lot of people are like, oh, my God, AI is going to ruin artists and stuff like that. I don't really think that's going to be the case. In some cases, I think it could could, you know, potentially replace certain jobs and stuff like that. But if you're an artist that's embracing this technology like Billy did, I think it's just really an, an innovative new technique. We will see the way of AI. Yes, we will see. <laughs> Back to 2015, I had to yes. ask you, Oh yeah, made an album with David Crosby. Um, how did the collaboration come about? Well, I'm really fortunate for that collaboration because how this happened was that I have this friend named Norm who's just a really fantastic guy and and he has amazing taste in music. And he had a record label way back when, I guess it would have been early 2000s, who actually released these, this music by Crosby called CPR, which stood for Crosby, Pavar, and Raymond. In my opinion, those are some of the best albums that, that Crosby ever did. They're, it's just the music is amazing. Anyway, he put these albums out. We became friends. And the long story short is that he said, you know, I'm friends with David Crosby and I'd really like to introduce you guys because I think he would love your music. And he was originally thinking that maybe he could recommend a manager or maybe he would be able to help in some way, but he had no idea that we would ever collaborate. So one day I get this message from, from Crosby and, and he had checked out my album. He's like, man, I really like this. This is really forward thinking music. This is cool, you know? <laughs> and so we started interacting on email and then eventually had dinner together with my friend Norm. And he was just so cool. I said, here, man, take my number. I said, really? Okay. So he said, I, I guarantee you this won't be the last time we, we hang. And we really hit it off personally. And then the next time he came through Idaho, I played him one of my, my songs. And he just completely flipped out. He brought his son into the hotel room, James. He's like, play this song for him. I played it. And then a month later or so, he said, hey, how would you like to play on my new album? That's the that's the short version. But that was like, it was one of these things that I couldn't believe was going to happen. Because with music, a lot of stuff falls through, as you know. And I actually didn't tell anybody, even in my family, that it was going to happen because I was afraid that it wouldn't happen. I only told them the day that I was actually standing in the studio. And I was like, oh my God, I'm here with, with David Crosby. We started the album, it was like October 31st of 2010, I think 2010. And this album took three years. It, it was just an amazing experience, you know. After all, a great honor. Yes, really great honor. And also just, you know, a way to like, we're total guitar geeks. 
Mm. And it was so cool to, to be hanging with somebody like him who's been working his whole life, obviously in music, but just a total acoustic guitar nut. And we would just sit there and work on tunings and trade guitar licks and just, <laughs> it, was, <laughs> it was so cool. I'd go stay at his house, you know, and go sleep on the couch and we'd write songs and drink coffee in the morning. And it was just, I, I feel really, really lucky, you know. What are your plans for 24? Uh, releasing the album, but is there a tour planning on it in Europe and USA? Yes. What yes. can you say about 24? Well, 24, it's coming right up. I have some amazing plans for 2024. One plan is beginning of the year, I'm going to be heading to, to India for some gigs, which I'm really excited about. I've never been there, so should have three or four gigs in India. Bunch of stuff throughout Europe, but I know that we have September and October planned specifically for Germany. And there will be other dates in Germany too. I have already have a date which is in Frankfurt on May 7th. So that's uh, something you can set your your calendars. Um, <laughs> so there's that. But but yeah, September, October is going to be a trio tour in Germany. And so I can't wait for that. That's in the works. So there's a bunch of stuff going on, but that's for your listeners. They can definitely come and catch me somewhere in Germany in the fall. Marcus, last question of our amazing talking about music and you. If the good fairy passes by and says <laughs> to you, you got three wishes for free for the world, mm -hmm. private, uh, for the music, what will that be? Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> that's a, that's out, a of, out of the stomach. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, the first thing that I would wish for, for the world would just be peace. You know, I think that we need peace. And I think that everybody deserves the opportunity to pursue life in, in a peaceful way. And, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of battles going on right now. There's a lot of wars going on. There's a lot of people being subjugated. And I just don't it doesn't make me feel good to see it. It's terrible. It's terrible. I mean, we've got Israel, we've got the Ukraine, we've got stuff happening in, in Rwanda, Africa. So peace would be my wish for the world. Uh, musical wish, man, I, I just, there, I don't know if it's a wish, but it's just to continue this trajectory of being really creative. I mean, I love creating stuff. If I could have a a fairy wave a magic wand, I would just create the coolest studio ever. And I'm kind of in the process of doing that over in Italy. I'm creating this really cool music room, which I've never really had the space for. But if I could create a really, you know, not necessarily huge studio, but just something just pimped out, you know, with every single piece of gear that I could have every single guitar hanging on the wall. That's what I would do. <laughs> and I would just upgrade my musical gear like to the degree that I could actually incorporate a bunch of other musicians too. I think it would be wonderful to offer my space to other people who are just getting going or people that are established, friends, and just record amazing stuff. Uh, third wish. Hmm. So you said musically, world, and what was private. the other one? Okay, my private wish. Well, I have a couple things. One is that I really want to master a few more languages. If I could master four or five languages, that would be my goal. I'm still learning Italian, meaning that I can communicate, but it's not it's not perfect. I would really love to master that, but I would love to speak German. I'd love to speak Spanish. Um, I'd love to speak French eventually. I think it would just be so cool because it just allows so much communication to happen. And then other than that, you know, just really staying healthy. I just, I love to be healthy and eating right. And, you know, just really staying on the top of my game and, and keeping, you know, working on things like my vocals and just keeping the same momentum, you know, so that that's, those are my three wishes right now. <laughs> Thank you for the free wishes. I hope that it will be realized by the good fairy. Markus, it was a very great pleasure to have you on my show. Thank you uh, for being here on my show. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate you having me. And those were wonderful questions. And it was a really nice chance to, to speak with you. I'm only sorry that the video is not working so we can <laughs> see each it's other. Not, no problem.